His VO2 max was 74 or 4.6 liters, and his best time actually was uh, 13.33. And when he ran this 13.33, this is how much oxygen requirement uh, he had when he was running this 5,000 meter. He started out a little fast, settled down the pace a little bit, pick up the pace at the end. So this is the actual amount of oxygen his body used, because we know at his body weight how much oxygen was required to run at that speed. So this is kind of a breakdown of how much oxygen uh, his body actually needed. And this, because of his VO2 max, is how much oxygen is actually being consumed. There's a difference, because this pink is oxygen deficit. Because he needed it, but he couldn't get it, because that's the max. Right? And this has to be paid back. So that's the oxygen deficit, and this is the oxygen deficit being paid back. So at the end of the race, he'll be huffing and puffing. That's because he's paying back the oxygen debt. Does that make sense? Anyway, <clears throat> uh, to make it a little more simple, suppose you're running the, the 5K, and that's your threshold. And whatever the pace you're running 5K at, this is how much oxygen your body requires. Okay? And it's some of them beyond your threshold. So that would be the oxygen deficit. Now remember earlier I said oxygen deficit accumulates. So each moment you're getting that much oxygen deficit. So at the bottom, actually what's happening is it's getting more and more and more. Okay? Does it make sense? Now as I said, there's a certain maximum that you can train your body to withstand. And that's the maximum oxygen deficit, or oxygen debt, I should say. Accumulating oxygen debt, and if it goes beyond that, that's too much acidosis. And that's when the bear jumps on your back. Been there. Yeah, been there, done that. And of course, that oxygen debt would have to be paid back. So again, this is mathematic. Depending on what your threshold and how you train your body to withstand oxygen debt, it's set. Um, now, if your threshold improves, that's your new threshold, you're running at the same speed. Now your oxygen deficit is less because your threshold is higher. Right? And your accumulation is less. Now, you're still trying to get the same oxygen, maximum oxygen depth, but now you have room to spare. When you have room to spare, you can run whatever the, the speed you have at the end, of the, the end of the race. That's why Peter Snell, we saw that last night, Peter Snell was actually slowest 200 meter runner in the final of that Rome uh, 800 meter final but he can run as fast as he could at the end because he had room to spare. You go beyond that, the bear is pulling you back. And even the recovery would be quicker because your oxygen debt is less. So, in a simple term, on the top, that's low aerobic development. The bear is waiting for you. And high aerobic development, you have room to spare and you can sprint. So, doesn't matter how fast you are, you can still sprint as fast as you can if you have this extra. Does it make sense? A lot of high school kids, they try to improve their speed because they're slowing down at the end. It's not because he's, he's not fast enough, but because he's gone beyond that max. But anyway, um, Arthur's original schedule, uh, now we're talking about miles here, but you know, we, like I said, we uh, suggest time base much better. But anyway, three long runs. Um, I changed it to starting Sunday, just to kind of make everything in sync, because all the schedule that we have in uh, material and uh, uh, running wizard starting Sunday. So basically what it is, is we have one long run Sunday, and second long run on Tuesday, and a uh, third long run on uh, Thursday. So those are the long runs, and in between, Arthur's original schedule had faster run, three-quarter effort, 10-mile run, Monday and Friday, and Fartlek on Wednesday, and the easy day being 13 miles on Saturday. 
and this was a 100 miles a week schedule. Uh, we shuffled things around a little bit, and we kind of felt that too fast to runs a little too much, so we actually put two easy runs in, in the middle and put the three-quarter effort run or out and back on Saturday. And we kept those three long runs because that's the basis, that's the, um, the, the prime emphasis of this phase. So we kept three long runs. So original schedule, this is 100 miles a week uh, from Arthur's book. You still have three long runs, three faster runs, 10 miles and five back in the middle, <coughs> and 13 miles easy. But you see the pattern that you have long, short, long, short, and fast, slow, fast, slow. Uh, kind of intermixing. Um, you can do it in any way you want. Uh, this is the initial stage if you're running hour to hour and 40, uh, excuse me, uh, hour and a quarter is the long run. That's fine. Long runs here, 40 minutes, 45 minutes, exactly the same pattern. You would do fat leg, 20 minutes, two mile tempo or out and back run, medium effort, and you have rest or cross training or 20 minutes easy job. So the pattern you can see exactly the same. When I started these people jogging, I talked about these cardiac patients and others we started jogging, we had to get them to run 15 minutes without stopping. That was the first thing. When we got them to run 15 minutes without stopping, then I said, okay, now you can run 15 minutes. Every third day or thereabouts, I want you to run half an hour. So we had them run Monday, Tuesday, 15 minutes, Wednesday they'd run for half an hour. Thursday, Friday they'd run for 15 minutes, Saturday they'd run for half an hour and to try and consolidate. When they could get to half an hour, uh, I tried to get them to run three quarters an hour, and then an hour. But we'd always go back to 15 minutes the other two days. But the important thing was to get that muscular endurance. The important thing was to get muscular efficiency so they could get out there and handle longer runs. And once we got them that stage where they could run for an hour, 15 minutes the other day, we brought the mid medium day up, and then we'd go for an hour and a quarter, an hour and a half. Very, very quickly, you can have people running big mileages, uh, you know, that previously you could just barely stay around the track because you're getting those longer runs. You can see the pattern, exactly the same pattern, hard, easy, hard, easy, two days easy in between, and you continue, continuously lengthening the, the long continuous run. So that's when you get uh, start getting the uh, muscular endurance, he calls it. So that's exactly the same pattern. So like I said, 60 years old, 16 years old, four hour marathon runner, Four, four minute minor. The principle is exactly the same. Say the workout calls for workout 45 minutes hill training, and that means 10 to 15 minutes warm up, hill exercise 45 minutes, cool down 10 to 15 minutes. You would jog to local high school and you do the hill training here. Um, up the steps, jog down, total of 20 minutes. So you would run up, jog down, and maybe you can alternate doing one step and then two steps, jog down. You continue doing that for 20 minutes. First one step, second one, two steps, and alternate. Right? So steep hill running and bounding. And then you go down on the track, stride straight, jog bend. Stride straight, jog bend. Do it two laps easy stride and then go back on the hill and then you do 20 minutes again up and down up and down this is the workout this is the important part this strides simulate downhill running but the emphasis is here so you would do the one step two steps jog down one step two steps jog down and then go back down again and do two laps of stride straight jog bend two laps and that's it and Jog 10, 15 minutes back. Boom, 45 minutes heel training with warm up and cool down. This is how he set up 10 weeks of conditioning, uh, four to six weeks of heel training, interval training, four weeks integration, four weeks and two weeks of taper. So that's 24 weeks as Arthur set it up. Let's say you only have 20 weeks instead of 24. What do we do? Um, if you're a seasoned veteran, just completed a marathon, or being very active, your pyramid would look something like this. Big base, you've been doing all the long runs, but very small sharpening. Maybe not enough leg strength. 
someone like this, you can say, okay, we'll just chop a few weeks off the conditioning. Keep it like this. Here's his plan. This, this is your plan. You keep this part intact. You've been doing this already. Don't need to do that 10 weeks. Just cut it down. In the case of high school freshman who hasn't been doing any conditioning, or somebody, high school kid, who's been doing lots of intervals, but never done any build-up, this pyramid would look like this. Very small base, but fast. They can run fast. Mm -hmm. Or, if you're a beginner, his pyramid would look like this. Very small base <laughs> and very <laughs> small everything. Um, out of this 24 weeks, then you can do cut here, cut there, cut here, keep this 10 weeks. Here's your 20 weeks. Here's your 20 weeks. So if you're coaching high school and you have seniors and freshmen, you can, you can do exactly the same 20 weeks, but a little bit different here. 